Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Lara May, a clinical pharmacist specializing in functional medicine, as well as a certified yoga teacher and Reiki master. I run a truly integrative health coaching practice, encompassing functional medicine lab testing, yoga and meditation, and a sprinkling of Reiki energy medicine. Join me here on Light Body Radio to break through your health plateau and come into alignment with your natural vitality. Hello and welcome to another episode of Light Body Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Lara May, and today I am going to help you uncover your destiny and teach you about manifestation in the multidimensional reality. So I'm really excited. It's going to be really cool today. And so this should just give you a introduction to what destiny is. And I will run through some questions to help you start thinking about it, where you are, where you want to be. Maybe you're feeling a little lost. Maybe you feel like you're not on your soul's path. And so this will help you really uncover and start to get in touch with your calling, which is different than your career, and we will get into that as well. And then from there, I'm going to um, talk about some um, new and improved ways for manifestation, which I just think are super fun. So what is destiny? Destiny is supported and overlighted by Source and the angels, and everyone's destiny is very unique. And everyone's destiny is needed in this time of ascension on this planet. We are all here to play an important part in the Earth's transformation. And your true destiny has many layers and complexities. But it begins with something you would joyfully do for 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you had no obligations, no pulls from your time and your energy, what would you do happily 24-7? All destinies are about helping and bringing joy to others, being of service. You are never too young or old to embrace your destiny path, and your angels will help you to rearrange your life to make it possible if you are willing. The destiny blueprint begins to unfold when you are a child. It is an inner guidance system that prompts you to do certain things and think in certain ways that will keep you in alignment with your soul and your soul contracts that you made before you came into this embodiment or you incarnated into this body. Your destiny is always something you love to do or something you've always dreamed of doing. Truly, you are here to live an extraordinary, amazing life. This includes transferring your consciousness I'm sorry, transforming your consciousness from a 3D or one-dimensional format into a multidimensional level. And a large part of your journey through this life is to fulfill your soul's destiny here on Earth. And when we go through the reincarnation process, our souls go through a um, period of um, forgetting or a veil, so to speak, And so a lot of people say this experience here on Earth, especially at this time of energetic ascension, is that we are going through the process of remembering of the true calling of our souls, the true ability of this vast energetic possibility that we are as human beings. And we are definitely physical beings having an energetic experience. Did I say that right? We're inner. No, I'm sorry. (laughs) We're energetic beings having a physical experience on this earth. So your destiny, like I said, is always something you love to do or something you have dreamed of doing. So to decode your destiny, you may need to separate your personal interests from your true destiny. And many individuals are just going along to get along. They're doing, you know, They're going through their everyday obligations, wake up, go to work, take the kids to school, whatever it is, and come home and repeat. But really, unless you're one of the lucky ones to be in a career that is also your calling, you're probably not doing your destiny work if you're just going through the motions every day. 
So you're going to have to dig a little deeper and separate these things that have become your life, if they become mundane, into what's possible, what lights you up, and what interests you. And so, of course, people can be interested in many things, but that's not necessarily your destiny path. So, for example, people are often interested in art, music, performance, some sort of creative expression, but this does not necessarily mean that they were meant to pursue a full-time career in this area. Also, some individuals do psychic readings because they can make a lot of money at it, but they don't necessarily have a lot of intuitive or psychic ability or discernment, and these could be actual signposts that indicate their true destiny is probably something completely different, and that's okay. And also, an individual may feel a strong connection to an animal, let's say horses, and they may interpret this as their soul's destiny. This may be more of a personal connection and a hobby. It's what the horse does for them or how it makes them feel. It makes them feel free, gives them power and courage. This is something that the human self wants to do and needs to do every once in a while. It's in a personal experience rather than a destiny. So what is the difference between destiny and career? You may, for example, train as a therapist, counselor, psychologist as a career, but your true destiny could be more as an intuitive counselor or spiritual guide or um, psychic channel even. Or you may have training as a nurse, but your higher destiny calling is to be an energy healer. Career is something that you have trained for, you get a job in, and you're following societal guidelines. Whereas destiny is something that is guided by your spirit and makes you feel a long, lifelong sense of excitement, inspiration, motivation, and passion. Now, some people might be lucky enough to be doing some of these more traditional careers that I just spoke of and feel all those things, the excitement, the inspiration, the motivation, the passion. But more often than not, that's not usually the feelings that we feel when we're going through our day-to-day jobs. So um, more another example might be someone who is a travel agent, but really their destiny could be doing something like spiritual tours or self-discovery guided tours, or someone who is um, a, a meeting planner for corporate businesses, but they are really supposed to be helping organizing spiritual conferences or global events that assist the planet in expansion. Or an individual who is employed in, let's say, a social work office, but they really need to be organizing and running their own humanitarian organization, which will help more people on a global level. So, just a few more things about destiny to point out. You are already qualified for this destiny. You need focus. And you remember, you need to study and try to deliver this destiny as highest form, but you are already qualified. Your skills and talents are not necessarily for you, but for the benefit of others. Your destiny is not so much about becoming something or someone else. It's really about being in service to others for the upliftment of humanity and being in your true core source self. Your destiny will be revealed over time and it will continue to evolve. You may be doing parts of your destiny right now, but um, in other times it might be, in other aspects, it might be time to put it together in a larger format. Your destiny is to interact with people on a public level and not just keep it private to yourself. You can't be of much service if you are um, holed up in your house or let's say even in an ashram or a monastery. Carolyn Mace talks about this. It's time to be Um, We are missionaries outside of the monastery in this new age. So really figuring out what lights you up, where you can be of service, where you can be of help, and taking that out into the world. Remember that all destinies are about service and uplifting others. I think I just said that. I might start to be sounding like a broken record. Knowing what your personal destiny is answers some of the most important questions all of us want to know. Like, why am I here? What is the secret to happiness? Really, when we are of service to others and we are in alignment with source and we are in alignment with our um, meaning and our plan, 
and our um, sacred contracts and soul contracts, then really that's when I, th I personally think that we really find happiness. And you might notice this. You might find it in glimpses as you're maybe doing volunteer work or you're maybe singing or painting, you know that feeling when you're in alignment with who you truly are and your spirits and your guides and source energy, that feeling is the initial glimpse that we can carry forward and it's sort of our, um, as Abraham calls it, our emotional guidance system. And so the more we try to align with that feeling, the more we'll be in alignment and we will be of service because even just being in a positive state of mind, especially in this tumultuous time that we live in, can be of service. If we can walk into the room and change the vibration, if we can raise the vibration of the room just by walking into it, then that in and of itself is a service. So think about that too. So what are the benefits of doing your destiny? Doing your destiny will help you manifest your highest potential as a human and spiritual being here on earth. The destiny path will bring greater spiritual empowerment, financial abundance, and personal fulfillment. Your skills and talents evolve more quickly when you are on your destiny path, and your destiny gives you a higher purpose that aligns with your higher self. Your destiny enhances and increases your connection and communication with your spirit guides. It also strengthens your psychic and telepathic skills and enhances your intuition and gives you more clarity and discernment about your life and about the decisions that are right for you. Your destiny brings more magic and synchronicities into your life, and it gives you lots of energy and helps you actually stay looking young. Your spiritual career and destiny constantly evolves, and it lasts an entire lifetime. And again, like Abraham says, the work is never done. We are constantly evolving. We're constantly figuring out what we want and what we don't want, and what we're in alignment with and what we're not in alignment with. But we're constantly growing and evolving and expanding. Okay, so in a few minutes, I'm going to take you through a questionnaire, and if you are able to sit down in a quiet spot so you can re reflect on these questions and write them down, that's great. If not, I'm going to include the questionnaire as a PDF download so you can have them and work with them uh, on your own. But first, I want to take you through a meditation to really get you in the space to start, you know, digging deep and looking inwards to your soul and your higher self. And so, again, if you're not in a place where you can do the questionnaire right now, then I do recommend whenever you have that chance to do the meditation first and then do the questionnaire. Okay? All right. So, take a comfortable seat in a quiet spot, hopefully. Take some deep breaths in through your nose. And sigh it out. <sighs> Take another deep breath in. And exhale deeply. Take another big deep inhale in. Feel your belly expand. And exhale. Let it all go. Continue to breathe quietly and deeply at your own pace. We now surround ourselves in a circle of white light. And as this white light surrounds us, we are placing a beautiful spinning diamond over our heads, connecting us to our higher selves, our guardian angels, and our destiny guides. We call in all of our guides, ascended masters, ancestors, all of the beautiful love and light beings that are here to help us. We ask you to come in and surround us now for our highest and greatest good. Feel them come in and surround you. Feel their energy around you. Feel your expansion as you sink your energy with theirs. Feel the oneness. 
Open your mind and heart now and just continue breathing easily. Now say to yourself or out loud, I am ready to uncover my true destiny. Be open to receiving. Be ready and willing. If you already have some inspirations and some communication from your guides coming in, feel free to open your eyes and write it down. And go ahead and get your pen and pencil as I take you through the questionnaire. Okay, so the first part is all about skills, talents, and interests. So the first uh, question or um, area to think about is what are your greatest strengths? Maybe, for example, you're great at organization or networking, or you have a particular artistic or musical talent. Maybe you're, you have great self-discipline, you're a, a fabulous athlete. Maybe you're an advocate for those that cannot speak for themselves. Whatever you think your greatest strengths are, just write them down. Again, this is um, a combination of free writing and um, probably it will turn into some channeled writing since we called in our guides and our angels and our higher self to help us. And feel free to pause and um, take as much time as you need and then come back. Okay, so number two. As a child or young adult, what occupation did you dream about pursuing? Number three. What were your interests as a young adult? Was it a particular area of science or art or traveling? What really lit you up? What did you just love to spend hours and hours doing as a child or young adult? Number four, what makes you feel the most creative, inspired, and fulfilled? I spoke about this earlier. Your destiny is what you could do 24-7 and feel totally fulfilled and lit up. What is that for you? Number five, and this is sort of a recreation of number one, but what are your current skills, creative abilities, and talents? So maybe these aren't your greatest strengths, but you still have something to contribute. So skills, creative abilities, and talents, what are those? right now in your current incarnation in life. Number six, what are your current activities and interests? What do you like to do now? What is it when you have only a little bit of time every day that you will do above anything else? Is it meditation? Is it spiritual work? Is it sports? Is it TV, movies, hanging out with friends? What is it? Networking? Writing, maybe? Yoga? Number seven, what have you done for work? What have your different career paths been? Or what have you done for service in the past? I know as a adolescent, um, the school that I went to required us to do 120 hours of customer service, customer service of community service to graduate high school. And so uh, we were able to pick whatever we wanted. And so, you know, like maybe you haven't done some volunteer work in a really long time, but there were organizations that you love to put your passion into. What are all the different jobs that you've had? 
another little tidbit about my life. When I was younger, I went through a lot of different jobs and I had a significant other at the time that made fun of me and said that my resume was way too long, that I'd done way too many things and it showed that I just couldn't focus. But really what I saw were all the different skills that I was learning and all of the different aspects about life and dealing with people that I was learning. And it really has come in handy. So don't be afraid to write down all those jobs and all those organizations and whatever it is. Again, we are doing this to uncover your destiny. So please don't judge yourself with anything you write down. Okay. Oh, number eight. What are you currently doing for work or service? You might have already written this down, but it's worth noting. Even if you don't like it, I'm sure you're learning something from it because oftentimes the things that challenge us the most are our greatest teachers and bring out those skills and abilities that maybe we didn't know we had. Okay, the next session section is about dreams. What are your dreams? So number nine, what was your dream as a young person? Did you have one thing that you daydreamed about over and over and over? Did you dream about a lot of different things? What was it? Number 10, what do you see as a perfect future for yourself? And honestly, I don't really like to use the word perfect a lot. Maybe we can call it ideal future the best version of our future. Number 11, do you have dreams of yourself doing things that you're not currently doing or that seem maybe magical, unreachable, or even impossible to manifest in a physical reality? If so, that's okay. Write those down. What are they? They're dreams for a reason. But what we think about is what becomes reality, so don't forget that. Number 12, what would you like to study or learn more about or experience more in your life? Do you wanna learn about different cultures? Do you wanna learn different languages? Do you wanna learn a musical instrument or a new way of painting or art or sculpture or glass blowing or welding? I don't know, <laughs> what is it that you want to learn more about and experience more in your life? Number 13, if your destiny is not an actual job or business, what do you perceive your service to be? And, you know, remember, our service work can manifest in many different ways. Uh, many lawyers are of service, policemen are of service, therapists are of service, medical practitioners are of service, um, CPAs are of service, come on. A lot of us spiritual people ha don't know anything about books or don't want to do it. So <laughs> hiring a, a great bookkeeper can be definitely of service. So just because you don't think it's spiritual work doesn't mean it's not of service. Okay, the next sec section is challenges. Number 14, what do you feel is your greatest challenge in life? And what do you feel you can do to overcome it? So maybe that's procrastination. That's definitely something I've struggled with. There's a podcast about that. Go back and listen to it if you uh, relate to that. Uh, maintaining good relationships or maybe maintaining good financial relationships or financial abundance. What are your greatest challenges in this life? Number 15, do you feel like a lack of preparation, knowledge, or experience, qualification, or strength for this destiny? If so, why? Write that down. Because remember what I said before, your destiny you are already qualified for. Number 16, do you feel limited by your age or family commitments? This could be a big one. A lot of us have family obligations, especially as we get older, whether it's to our own children or maybe taking care of elderly family members. If you do, what do you feel the needs, what do you feel needs to be done to overcome these limitations? Maybe it's setting up healthy boundaries. 
Or maybe it's actually saying no in the most loving way possible. No is a complete sentence. Or maybe it's saying yes to more things. Maybe you say no way too much out of fear. Shonda Rhimes wrote a really great book about that, The Year of Yes. Okay, the next section, guidance and your source relationship. You can use the word God if you want. I like the word source or spirit. So number 17, what was the happiest time in your life and why? Eighteen. If any, what specific messages have you received from your guides in meditation about your work or service? Or maybe what have you been shown? Sometimes we'll get messages from our guides and angels in the form of visual pictures. We all receive messages a little differently. Sometimes they can be auditory. That's called clear audience. Sometimes they can be visual. Um, sometimes they can just be like a sense of knowing that's called clairsentience. So what messages have you received from your guides? Even if you've been ignoring them or denying them, at least at this point right now, acknowledge them, make that step of acknowledgement. Okay. Number 19, give an example of how you follow divine guidance in a career or service in the past. Have you ever been guided to a career or some sort of service? Have you felt the call? Have you felt this unexplainable urge or push? That's the guidance. That's the call. Have you responded? Maybe you felt or heard the call and didn't respond. And the last one, do you have an ongoing spiritual or meditation practice? A simple yes or no. Okay, so that is the questionnaire. And when I do this work with my clients, it's, um, it can be, you know, it's involved. So don't expect, I don't know, it's hard to say. Sometimes you can get epiphanies and earth-shaking answers, life-changing, you know, um, sort of like bursts of light, big ahas, and other times it's very subtle. So definitely if you don't feel like you really um, uncovered anything, uh, don't beat up on yourself. Maybe um, come back to it later. Do the meditation and come back to it again and see how your answers change. The more you work with your higher self and your spirits and your guides, the easier that it'll be to receive and understand and hear their guidance, as well as being able to respond and having that faith and knowing of maybe what action steps to take next. So there is a level of interpretation to this questionnaire, and that's what I do with my clients. And so really looking at each person as a whole, and you can do this because obviously no one knows you better than yourself, but taking a holistic look at all of your skills, all of your different trainings, your activities, your interests, combine them with your jobs, or how have you, you know, put them into work in different types of service. This will all help you lead yourself to uncover what your true destiny is. And you will also, you know, take into your heart's desire what makes you feel inspired. That is extremely important and center to all of this work. So we want to look at all the aspects together in order to reveal the destiny. So like for example, I would say my destiny has had components of obviously being a teacher, but also um, a musician, a energy healer, a speaker. Um, I've had, you know, worked in customer service and 
um, obviously my professional work as a pharmacist, but also, you know, my training and work as a Reiki practitioner and now a yoga teacher and meditation teacher. And um, so I feel like my destiny is to be to culminate Again, everything from my past up to this day and bring that to you in a way uh, that can help you expand and grow your life and your passions. So I can I'll go through some general um, destiny category areas. The first one is the creative arts. So that would include painter, artist, graphic artist, actor, interior designer, sculptor, architect, builder, clothing designer, author, writer, um, product, uh, product developer, or chef, or etc. So those are things that are like blatantly in your face creative. Although I am of the personal opinion that we are all creative in some way, shape, or form, even if we don't have an overt involvement in a specific creative art. So then um, the next one is the health and healing arts, and that includes energy healer, psychic counselor, acupuncturist, massage therapist, aromatherapist, hypnotherapist, yoga teacher, personal trainer, nutritionist, naturopath. I'm going to include nurse, physician, pharmacist, physical therapist, because even if we're working in the Western medicine fields, I feel like you are still one-on-one -on -one with someone that is in need and you are providing them, even if it's just um, an ear to listen to or support and reassurance in their time of need. And that is of great service. So musical arts, which I think could be included under creative arts, but that would be musician, singer, composer, recording technician, etc. Communication arts, public speaker, media consultant, teacher, public relations, a diplomat, counselor, advisor, mentor, empowerment speaker, coordinator, facilitator, director, an animal communicator even. Technical arts, so scientist, researcher, analyst, computer programmer. So just looking through this list, I can see a little bit of pieces of my life in all of them, and I'm sure you will too. So, um, and that's good because I feel like that helps you know create us as a whole balanced um, individual and being. Humanitarian arts, volunteer, philanthropist, organizer, networker. And then some other areas, explorer, environmentalist, biotechnician, travel guide, interpreter. So once you have identified your primary destiny direction or directions, you can then begin to look at how you can use your skills and talents to move forward in this area. So here's an example. A humanitarian could express their destiny in a number of ways. They may want to create a global website to promote your humanitarian cause or work with charities or write articles or start a radio show or podcast or start an assistance network. Or maybe you, you're really good at connecting people together or traveling the world and going on service missions or maybe just speaking about um, different topics or being an advocate or advisor. So really it's all about exploring and brainstorming how you could manifest your creative gifts and talents in your own destiny direction. So something else um, that I wanna make sure that you are in the habit of is a daily meditation. And again, I'm sure I sound like a broken record because I, I probably talk about this on almost every podcast that I do is having some sort of daily meditation practice. Even if it's as little as five to 15 minutes, that's all it takes because this is your chance to connect with your guides, to connect with your angels, to quiet your mind, to open yourself up to receive and be within that oneness with your source self. And this will help you start to manifest all the, all the various different aspects of your destiny and your life. So this helps you um, to clear the old way of doing things. It helps you to reconfigure and ask for a new spiritual connection. And again, the more you do it, maybe the more guides you call on, or maybe you notice that you only work with one or two specific guides. 
But this is your chance to ask them to help you create your destiny in a fun and easy and graceful way. So that's another key that I didn't really mention before is that this should be fun and easy. It shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be grueling. Your destiny is Again, you're already prepared and skilled for it, so it should be fun and easy. And your guides are all around you all the time, but they, they do require you to ask them for help for them to really intervene. So you have to be an active participant. So every day in your meditation, ask for your guides and angels to help you. Ask, you know, what would you have me do today? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say? And to whom? That's a prayer from A Course in Miracles. But it really does, like, open it up and it expresses your willingness, but also allows your guides to really, you know, show you what's out there to reveal and to manifest your destiny. If you've been out of alignment with your true destiny, you, um, like I said, you'll need to ask your guides and the spiritual hierarchy to get you back on course and give you a new plan. You will want to consciously and deliberately release attachments to what you want because honestly, most of the time our destiny is greater and bigger than any of us could ever imagine. So it's not about what we want, but it's about what can we do to be at the highest and greatest service utilizing the skills that we bring into the world. So we also want to release all of our old patterns, preferences, and fears that would impede us. And fears is a big one because a lot of us are afraid of the unknown. Even if it could be, again, like I said, greater than we could ever imagine, we're afraid. <laughs> so it's just part of the human condition. But we can release it and we can grow past that. So do research into your destiny field several times a week and journal ideas and directions and possible products and services. The more you stay in alignment with this, the more you'll start to see synchronicities and manifestations start to occur. Be open to change. Be spontaneous and flexible. Be open to receiving new ideas and guidance from your guides. You are not trying to do this all by yourself. Please know that. Look for signs and clues about your destiny each day being given to, to you by your guides. Get training if you need to or take classes in different areas that you're interested in because you never know how this could, you know, come back and help you. I'm sure as most of us now, if we're in our 30s, 40s, 50s, however old we are, looking back, there are some things that we did in our younger years or days that we never would have expected would help us now, but are. We're still using those skills. Work slowly and diligently and be patient. And remember that it is a process. So it's not overnight. It is not fireworks and um, big ahas all the time. It's little steps and little synchronicities, but you'll notice an evolution as things start to come together. Get organized. Again, focus your intention daily and your affirmations on your destiny during your daily meditations. Sometimes it's beneficial to create business cards or a website to anchor and ground your destiny in the physical. If you schedule regular events, classes, or sessions, it also helps ground your work and make you more committed and responsible. And it also keeps your creative energy flowing. Also, working with others is great. Finding a tribe or a group that can help you stay inspired and motivated is fabulous. And again, your destiny should be fun, creative, and constantly evolving to higher levels in order to keep you interested and passionate. And this should not be hard. Think of your destiny as a very exciting adventure written in the stars and blessed by the angels. All right, so now let's go into the um, multidimensional manifestation aspects. So what does that actually mean? Well, manifest, the definition of the word manifest is the ability to bring into form that which you desire. And manifestation is the materialization of a desire, thought, wish, dream, object, or action. So you might want to list a variety. You might want to manifest a variety of things. It could be 3D practical things, money, a new job, business success, clients, a home, car, computer, 
all of that physical stuff that we are surrounded with in these human lives. Or maybe it's more of spiritual things. So your destiny, like we just talked about, or maybe it's intuitive abilities or healing gifts, or just a stronger and more powerful connection to your guides and angels. Or maybe it's something on a more personal level. Maybe it's a powerful voice or skills as a public speaker, musical abilities or athletic abilities. They could also be things like motivation, confidence, focus, and strength. So there are many things that we can manifest in many different forms. So don't always think about manifestation as that physical something or that money, which I feel like if you've read or been exposed to the secret, that's really what it focused on. But that's really not the heart and the core of manifestation at all. So 3D manifestation, it, we need to understand what that is in order to understand the new multidimensional manifestation. So the average, so let's see, how are we going to look at this? The average person most people manifest using their own ideas, thoughts, desires, and skills. And this includes researching and using knowledge and practices available to them. For example, if you're looking for a new job, then you would look online or you would look in the paper. You would think about getting job training or networking with people you know. And um, you would probably look for something for practical reasons, financial reward, or personal gain. But multidimensional manifestation involves connecting and working with many unseen and invisible guides, elementals, maybe such as fairies or leprechauns, angels, your higher self, maybe even animal totems or working with nature, all of these aspects to help you achieve your goals and dreams. So multidimensional manifestation is a co-creative process between you and higher spiritual power rather than relying solely on yourself and your um, human ego. Multidimensional, manif multidimensional manifestation is more magical and fulfilling as that it is more in alignment with divine synchronicities and opportunities orchestrated by the angels. Multidimensional manifestation enables you to manifest things more quickly and easily by utilizing energy, your psychic gifts, and being guided and supported by spirit. It combines practical skills with higher multidimensional tools and techniques, and these tools can include the use of prayer, affirmations, energy work such as Reiki or other types of running energy, visualization, meditation, focusing, being intentional, creating grids and templates, and maybe things like money bowls or crystals or feng shui, different things like that. So. Let's go over some tools for multidimensional multi manifestation. Again, meditation. So meditation, again, is an important tool in the manifestation process as it helps us focus our energy, gain clarity, and fine-tune what we want. So if you're ready, I'm going to take you through another meditation on this podcast, I know. So we're looking at about 45 minutes here, but... I think you'll enjoy this. So sit or lie down in a comfortable position. Again, take a few deep breaths to relax your body. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale deeply. Let it all go. Inhale through your nose. Visualize yourself surrounded with white light and a golden sphere. Exhale. Feel the white light and the golden sphere expand. Now state your intentions and what you would like to manifest. I would suggest starting with an I am statement. I am ready and willing. I am open and excited and eager to manifest my destiny, my highest and greatest good. And of course, you can plug in whichever statements you like. We call on all the guides of the highest truth and compassion. We call on our higher selves and our ancestors 
to strengthen all of our affirmations and intentions generated during this meditation. And from this point, maybe you just want to go through a list of positive affirmations you have maybe written down or that you use. And when you're ready, come back to the room. That was just a really quick process just to give you an idea of how simple it can be. That was literally two minutes. So, and again, like once you have sat down and you've worked through where you want to focus your intentions, uh, then you'll naturally come up with some affirmations, which are I am statements. So now I'm going to talk about some affirmations. Your affirmations should always be positive and said aloud in a sincere and heartfelt way. This way you feel, the way you feel is very important because your feelings determine your success of the manifestation. And I think, again, I talked about a little bit about what was missing from the secret before that it focused a lot on material um, aspects of our lives. But I think also what they didn't talk about is that the only way affirmations really work is if you feel them. So you have to feel it to be able to really see it manifest and you feel it to believe it. So it's beneficial if you have an emotional connection with whatever you're trying to manifest that is positive and again, not fear-based. You need to be in alignment with what you are asking for. So you may need to do some clearing and um, clearing of blockages and clearing your limitations to really manifest your goals and to get you into this work. So um, let's say that you're always attracting the wrong men or women into your life, or your wrong mates or partners, or maybe it's just doesn't even get to that point of being a mate or a partner. That's how wrong they are. You may have an underlying belief or pattern or feeling that you don't deserve the best or that you don't really believe or think that that person exists. So you'll need to work to clear these issues. And a really good tool for that is working with the Violet Flame. And if you're not familiar with the Violet Flame, it is a um, really, it's a powerful tool to burn up and transmute blockages and old beliefs and really, um, the, of course, the color purple is connected, is associated with spirit and um, angels and guides. So using the violet flame and asking your guides to be cleared of all these limitations and to let go of all that no longer serves you. And maybe even doing a cord cutting meditation with Archangel Michael. So it's also important to engage mentally, visually, and emotionally with your affirmations. Again, like you have to get visceral with it. That's the key to an affirmation. If you just go around saying all day long, you know, like, I am skinny, I am skinny, I am skinny, I am skinny. If you don't really feel it, and again, that's really not a great <laughs> affirmation anyway, because really what we should be saying is, I am healthy, I am happy, healthy, and free. I am at my healthiest weight. I am a glowing being of love and light. So those are manifestations that will really change your energy and change your physical makeup. Especially if, again, you are mentally, visually, and emotionally engaged with them. So another example might be, I am magnetizing money and manifesting miracles now. And you would say this aloud, visualizing money flowing in and through and around you. And imagine how you will feel with all this money. Make it real to you. So if money is what you're looking for, what is it about the money? What's the money going to provide in your life that you don't have now? Maybe it's a sense of security. Maybe it's a sense of freedom. Maybe it's a sense of support. So think about how you would feel with the support and the security. And in the same context of 
seeing, visualizing the money, again, swirling around you, filling up your bank account, maybe seeing a bunch of zeros on a check that you're writing or a um, check that you're receiving. Um, so, again, get multi-sensory with it. All right. So, you, there are things you can do in your home. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of feng shui, but there are... Um, there's some, all, there's some other things. So it's important to maybe have some physical representations around you in your home to help you bring in the energy into the physical. So I um, earlier I mentioned something called a money bowl. And that is just um, a bowl that you put change in or that you maybe throw a few dollars in. And just the act of seeing that money there reminds you that you are, that money is always around you, that money is always coming in and going out in a healthy cycle, that you're supported. Um, bamboo plants are another great uh, symbol of abundance. Maybe green frogs or four-leaf clovers, water fountains are great because they keep energy flowing. And or any other maybe little talismans or charms that you feel connected to. Other manifestation objects can include different jewelry or clothing, or maybe um, statues of Ganesha or Lakshmi, or and if you're a yoga practitioner or um or you feel a connection within any of the um, Indian gods and goddesses, maybe having some of those around. All right, so now we want to define what we want to manifest. So to begin with multi multi-dimensional manifestation, you need to be very clear about what you want. So if you want to find a romantic partner, you will need to ask for your highest and greatest good, your potential partner. But you also must be willing to wait and allow Source to work through you and with you. So maybe start by writing down a list of things that you want to manifest. Make an appointment to work on this with your guides at the same time every day and use the meditation process we went through earlier to do that. So um, ask your guides for help to manifest the things in your life. Work with prayers, affirmations, visualizations, and all of this will help it become stronger and more powerful over time. Begin to visualize the things already manifested. So they're already there in your life. And when you do that, then you also start to, again, connect it with that feeling of what it'll feel like when it has happened. And so, again, that's part of like bringing, being in that energetic alignment. So maybe if you're asking about spiritual gifts or talents you wish to bring forward, imagine yourself using these gifts. What will you do with them once they are opened up to you? Use your energy skills to infuse the energy and light into your, into your manifestation. So if you already work with a type of energy or... Um, or psychic practice, then use that to amplify what you're doing. It is also really important to have a gratitude and appreciation practice. So definitely include that in your daily activities. Maybe you want to do this manifestation meditation first thing in the morning, your first 5 to 15 minutes that you're awake. And then at the end of the day, you can have a 5 to 15 minute gratitude practice. Gratitude definitely shifts our energy and it forces us to focus on what's already going right, what we're already appreciative and grateful and loving for. And it also it helps expedite the powers of manifestation. So, I challenge you to t to start a 21-day manifestation process. So for the next 21 days, I want you to follow this. Step 1, Write seven things down on paper that you would like to manifest and take a few deep breaths, sort of get into alignment with those seven things. And then step two is proceed with the med meditation that we did before. And you can use the affirmations and visualizations if you want. Step three, state verbally. I am now manifesting everything I have just said into the physical dimension, and I give thanks for all that I am receiving. 
and do this every day for 21 days. So I can give you some sample um, prosperity affirmations. So one is, I am manifesting more money and abundance into my life now. And you can visualize a waterfall of money and coins falling or spiraling all around you. You can see yourself being able to buy all the things that you would like to have. But again, feeling that secureness and that freedom and that support. Maybe you're looking for healing in your life. And a sample affirmation for that would be, I am the embodiment of divine healing and perfection now. And the visualization you could use is see yourself surrounded by glowing white light with your arms stretched out and light shining all around you. See yourself maybe running on the beach or swimming or doing all the things you've always wanted, feeling powerful, feeling healthy, feeling happy, and feeling whole and completely satisfied. Maybe, we've talked about this, maybe it's a relationship that you're wanting to manifest. So your affirmation could be, I am attracting the highest potential partner into my life now. And the visualization would be to visualize yourself in a circle of light and your partner coming forward and greeting you, seeing a beam of light connecting your heart to their heart and drawing you closer. Feel the love, the passion, and inspiration between the two of you. Again, feel the gratitude, feel the oneness, feel the connection. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast today. It was kind of on the longer side. We're approaching an hour now, but I gave you lots of tools and lots of things to try and to work with. We've talked about your destiny and how to manifest in a multidimensional way. So if you have any questions or comments, I welcome them. If you have any, you know, uh, desires for a different subject matter, please let me know. I am always looking um, in different ways to provide you and to be of service for you. Um, so I hope to hear feedback maybe after you've tried these things for a week, 21 days, whatever it is. Or if you come up and you try things and you struggle with them, definitely let me know and I can help you work through those. I am always available either in the comment section or by email. And um, definitely uh, follow me for more support on social media at Facebook and Instagram at Dr. Lara May, D-R-L-A-R-A-M-A-Y. And I hope you have fun with this and you start to see your life expand and evolve in ways that are better than you could ever imagine. Namaste, and I will catch you on the flip side.